Hi. I'm going to explain the difference between a balanced and unbalanced audio signal. This is the basic concept of how a balanced audio signal works. First, let's look at our unbalanced line. Either of these can be carried down a number of different cables uh, with a number of different connectors, TRS, XLR, Phoenix, but the concept is the same. For the purpose of the demonstration, we're going to use tip ring sleeve or tip sleeve for unbalanced. This is a quarter inch guitar cable, for instance. So, with our quarter inch guitar cable, here's our cable. There are two conductors. There's the sleeve and the tip. The sleeve is pin one, the shield and the ground, and the tip is pin number two. That's what carries the voltage, the current, the signal that we are trying to transmit. So, on an unbalanced guitar cable, Pin 1 is the shield, which is a braided wire that wraps around the outside of the conductor to shield it from interference. That's uh, any electromagnetic field that is inducting noise or trying to induct noise onto our precious signal conductor, pin number 2. Pin 2 carries the voltage. For this demonstration, let's just say it's a sine wave. So, what it does is it carries AC current. There's our signal, our sine wave traveling down the pin 2 conductor. Now, the shield can only shield so much. So, when you run this for uh, long distances, you'll notice it starts to pick up noise, hum, buzz, sometimes even FM radio transmissions can be inducted onto it and then amplified at the destination when you turn the gain up on your guitar amp or your mixer or whatever. So you shouldn't run this for more than about 20 feet or so as a general rule. Uh, here's the noise that gets inducted. Instead of our pure sine wave, we get our signal plus the inducted noise. So it might look something like this. Let's say that's a 60 cycle hum, a dimmer rack, a power source, uh, just a, a, an AC, um, a rack with a bunch of AC power going through it that's inducting this onto our line. So in addition to our signal, we also get the noise that gets past the shield. Some of it's blocked by the shield, the shield helps, but it can't block everything. So the noise gets inducted in our line and we get the signal plus the noise equals noisy signal. A balanced connection has an elegant and ingenious way of solving this. A quick Google search revealed that uh, balanced audio was actually invented by uh, Bell Laboratories back when they were first inventing the telephone system. So, a balanced connector, or a balanced cable, audio line, instead of just pins one and two, It's what we call a TRS instead of a TS, which stands for tip, ring, and sleeve. Here's the sleeve, here's the ring, here's the tip. Sleeve is still number one, the shield. The tip is still pin number two. The sleeve is the third pin, pin number three. 
So we have two hot signal conductors. That's pins two and three in addition to the shield that runs down the outside of the cable. So again, the shield blocks as much interference as it can. Pin 2 carries our signal. And now comes pin 3. What makes the balanced different than the unbalanced? Pin 3 also carries our signal, our AC voltage that represents our signal that we're transmitting. But, it is transmitted 180 degrees out of polarity. Now what happens is the noise gets inducted on the line the same way it does on the unbalanced line. There's nothing special about this that blocks noise any more than the, than the unbalanced line at this stage. Same shield blocks out and drains to ground as much interference as possible, but the noise still gets inducted onto our signal, onto pins 2 and 3. So instead of our pure looking sine wave, we will get the noise plus the signal. Here it is on pin 3, 180 degrees out of polarity. Now this is where the magic happens. Here, say this is a, here's our mixer input. On an unbalanced line, it would just read pin 2. It reads the voltage on pin 2, that's our audio line. So, it comes in with the noise and the signal all together like that. Noisy signal, talking about the unbalanced. With the balance, though, with this, it reads the difference between pins 2 and 3. It reads pin 2 minus pin 3. So then what happens is you get this minus this is essentially the same as flipping the polarity on this, flipping this back into polarity. In fact, that's an easier way of explaining it. It flips the polarity on pin 3. So, you'd think that you would get something like that. This minus this equals this plus this in polarity. But what happens to the noise? I drew the noise here, but what actually happens to the noise? The noise is imparted on both of these conductors equally and the noise will be in phase here compared to here. The noise on pin 3 will be in polarity with the noise on pin 2 because it was inducted from an outside source. Remember, this polarity flip happened at the beginning, where the signal was transmitted from. So down the line, anything that gets inducted down the line is going to be in polarity 
And then here, when this happens, the phase flip, that noise is going to cancel out. The noise on pin 3 is going to cancel out the noise on pin 2. And instead of getting this noise plus signal, the noise is canceled out, the signal is additively summed together, and you get your signal minus the noise. That's how it works.